Is your income too high to contribute to a Roth IRA? Are you concerned that doing post-tax contributions to the PRAP will create more RIT spillover than what you want? Well, if you've not heard of it, there's something called a backdoor Roth IRA that can help you get around both of these obstacles. Or it could just be another great way to save in a tax-deferred account. But when doing a backdoor Roth IRA, you may owe taxes on other traditional IRAs due to something called the aggregation rule. Well, with the PRAP available to us, there's a way around that too. Backdoor Roth IRAs and using the PRAP to get around the aggregation rule. That's what this video is about. Hi, I'm Dan Lamar, CFP professional with United Wealth Management, where we specialize in PRAP management and financial planning for pilots at United Airlines. And like many of you, my business partner, Alan Buley, and I are both pilots for United. Welcome to my video about backdoor Roth IRAs. Let's get right into it, but before we do, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new videos come out. All right, let's get right into it. We're talking about backdoor uh, Roth IRAs. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. Uh, as always, uh, don't take this as tax, legal, or investment advice. Seek your own personal wisdom or guidance from your own advisor for your situation. Um, this pertains to uh, United Pilots and the PRAP. For brevity purposes, I'm not going to get into a lot of great details about the differences between Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs. I'm going to assume that background information is already known. And some of the stuff I, I say here is going to apply only to the United Airlines 401k or what we call the PRAP. So it may not apply to other 401k. So I'm just going to uh, key kind of keep it at that uh, for brevity uh, purposes. Uh, so again, we're talking about pre-retirement Roth conversions, uh, also known as backdoor Roth IRAs. Why is this important to know for United Pilots? Well, first of all, uh, we're running out of places to put uh, tax-favored money. Now, uh, it's so nice to be able to see that because uh, 12, 15 years ago, we were certainly not saying that, and that was certainly not the case. So it's nice that times have finally caught up and we have a little bit of uh, extra uh, money to invest now. So we're looking for a different place to invest it. Uh, so we've got the PRAP. we got high contribution limits there. We can put post-tax money into the PRAP, but that creates some additional spillover. So if you're trying to limit spillover, this is another vehicle that's backdoor Roth IRA is a way to get around that uh, possibly. Um, and then even if you're not concerned about spillover and you're just killing it out thing, in that thing and, and, uh, and maxing out your contributions, this is just another way to contribute uh, tax-favored uh, money into a tax-favored account. So that's kind of why it's important to do. And then the other thing about it, and what I'm going to talk about this video, is that um, there's something called the aggregation rule, and it has to do with paying taxes. When you do these Roth conversions on traditional IRAs that are already out there, so we're going to talk about a way to get around that. So those are all the reasons why it's important to do this. So when it comes to a traditional IRA, uh, deductible contributions, we cannot as pilots make deductible contributions to traditional IRAs because of income limits. Okay, now I say that pretty broadly, but uh, and I say that for United Pilots, so that's in most situations. So always, again, check your income against what the income limits are for your situation. Make sure that doesn't apply to you. But for the most part, uh, we can't make these deductible contributions to a traditional IRA. We can always, however, make non-deductible contributions to a traditional IRA, no matter what your income is or status of retirement plan. So that's the thing we can always do is make non-deductible contributions. Um, there's the income limits. So again, just check them against your own income, whether you can make a uh, deductible contribution to an IRA. Uh, and then Roth IRAs, again, same thing. We cannot make direct contributions, and I say we, most pilots, United Pilots, cannot make direct contributions to a Roth IRA due to the uh, income contribution limits. Um, those are the contribution limits there. You know, again, I say most pilots, so check them against what your income is. So when we can't do that, it kind of leaves us a limited, uh, limited options on what kind of an IRA we contribute to. Uh, as far as doing PRAP Roth conversion, so I did a video on how to put post-tax money into the PRAP. We convert that into the Roth account in the PRAP, and that's another, it's a super, super good way to make uh, post-tax contributions and make them tax-free through the Roth 401k, and that would be my first choice. But if that's already maxed out or you don't have spillover, this is another choice, the backdoor Roth IRA. So again, you can do PRAP Roth conversions 
you only well, there's only so much you can contribute you may create spillover and I like I said there is a previous video on that and that link should show up here at the top so just a quick uh, review Roth IRAs we make um, <clears throat> non-deductible contributions to a Roth IRA we're paying taxes up front we don't get a tax break for uh, tax break for it up front it goes into the Roth IRA it grows tax free comes out in retirement and we don't owe any taxes on it because We've already paid it a month front, and we have tax-free income for qualified uh, income distributions in retirement. When we do a traditional IRA, we do get a bit of a tax break up front. These are deductible contributions. It goes into a traditional IRA. It grows tax deferred. But when we take the money out, part of it goes to the government because you haven't paid taxes on it yet. And then we get some in an after-tax income. So it's a great way to, to defer your taxes. But again, we can't make these deductible contributions because uh, we generally exceed the income limits that allow us to make those. What we can do is, and what's not restricted by income limits, are non-deductible contributions into a traditional IRA. So we do not get the tax break. We still got to pay taxes on that money up front. It goes non-deductible into a traditional IRA. It grows tax deferred. And when the money comes out later in retirement, part of it goes to the government, okay, just the gains uh, on our investments are taxed. And then we get, when we take income, we get a return of principal and an after-tax income. So that's what that, and the key here is that, is that there are no income restrictions on making these non-deductible contributions to a traditional IRA. <clears throat> uh, so now we do, we, so when we do these, there's something else we can just do a regular IRA to a Roth conversion. So we make deductible contributions, whether they're deductible or not. Let's just talk about the conversion itself. We have a traditional IRA over here. We do this thing to a, called a Roth conversion, so we want to turn it into from a tax-deferred account to a tax-free account. When we do the Roth conversion, we pay taxes. When we do that, in the year we pay that conversion, it, it goes into a Roth account. It's now tax-free for the rest of our life. And so anytime we pull income from that, it's going to be income tax-free. Why would we do this? Well, we're going to do this in years in which we think we are in a lower tax bracket than what we would be in the future. So we'd, pay a, we'd rather pay a lower tax uh, rate now than what we might uh, in the future. Good years to do this is maybe right after retirement and when maybe we're living off savings and essentially we don't have any income, therefore a very, very low tax bracket if we're living off savings. So those are good years to do Roth conversions. And I did a whole video about the process of doing Roth conversions uh, in retirement. So that's why we would do, uh, that's a good reason to do Roth conversions. Now, we do this thing called a backdoor Roth IRA, and we're starting to bring all these elements together when we do this. Now, again, there's no income restrictions on making non-deductible contributions to a traditional IRA. Those non-deductible contributions, when they come out, are never taxed. We do a Roth conversion of that money, and we'd only pay taxes on the gains of that money, and then that goes in and ends up into a Roth IRA. So this is what we call a backdoor Roth IRA. Again, non-deductible contributions to a traditional we do a Roth conversion, we only pay taxes on the gains, it turns into a Roth account or we transfer it into a Roth account. And again, if there are no gains, there are no taxes. And so that's how you get around the income limits of doing a regular a direct Roth IRA contribution. There's a couple of hurdles with this, okay? So let's just say we're gonna do a backdoor Roth IRA and we have a big traditional IRA sitting out there that's got all pre-tax money in it, hasn't been taxed yet, and it's for $100,000 or whatever amount it might be. The amount itself doesn't make that much difference um, <clears throat> uh, to, the, to the concept that is. Uh, so we're gonna make, so we got the traditional IRA out here, we're gonna make post-tax contributions to, to a traditional IRA number two. And we want to do this Roth conversion. We think, hey, we're not going to pay any taxes on the uh, gains. So let's go ahead and do this. Well, the IRS says, hey, not so fast. They're going to look at that traditional IRA and go, hey, there's a thing called the aggregation rule. And you're going to pay taxes on this conversion in a proportional amount of these two accounts combined. Okay, so it doesn't, so it, it's, uh, it, it, you end up getting taxed on the conversion a fair amount. If you do the math, uh, this is kind of what, look, what it looks like. You get, you're doing a $7,000 conversion. Your total in both accounts is $107,000. The proportional amount that's not taxed is $457. So you would owe taxes on $6,543. Okay, so that's called the pro rata conversion rule. 
And it's kind of a pain because it can stop people from doing these traditional, uh, these uh, backdoor Roth IRAs. Okay, well, here's what we get into now. The aggregation rule applies to traditional IRAs, SEP IRAs, and simple IRAs. And so <clears throat> any type of an IRA out there. So you would have to add up all these things, look at the pre-tax amount, and prepay, and you'd have to pay taxes proportionally. What well, does not apply to 401k assets, okay? It does not apply to spousal IRAs, inherited IRAs, or 401k assets. So that is the key right there. So at the peer, with the PRAP, we have the opportunity to take traditional IRAs, as long as there's no post-tax money in there, we can take traditional IRAs and roll them into the PRAP. And now they become a 401k asset. It's called a rollover contribution, and they are no longer considered an IRA, and they are no longer part of the aggregation rule. So when we do this um, traditional IRA in which we put nine deductible contributions in here, we do a Roth conversion. There is no more IRA out there to, take, to worry about. It's a part of the PRAP. It's part of the 401k asset. So we don't have to do this anymore. So as long as, as long as all of them are gone. So, okay, so you don't have any more traditional IRAs out there. And that's how we get around it. Now, if you don't mind paying taxes on the conversion, that's one thing. But uh, this would be a way to get around it. So the whole point of what we're why we're talking about this would be if you wanted to avoid the, uh, the paying of taxation on the traditional IRA. So again, we do the Roth conversion. We'd pay taxes on the gains only. And again, if we put the money in and did the conversion right away, there would be no gains. And uh, there probably there would be no taxes. And that's how you get it into a Roth IRA. So easy uh, piece of cake. So um, in our, as, as far as rolling the traditional IRA into the Schwab, into the PRAP, under the PRAP umbrella. Call the PRAP service center. Tell them you want to do this. They're going to send you an application. It looks just like this. Follow the instructions. There's a couple restrictions on it. Uh, one is, uh, follow again, follow the instructions on the application. Uh, you're going to end up requesting a check from your current custodian. It's going to be made out to the United Airlines PRAP account plan for the benefit of your name and the last four social security number. Uh, and then I would mail, I would have them mail the check directly to the application, the uh, address on the application itself. Uh, and with any questions, call the PRAP service center. They are, they are uh, really good about it. Uh, and again, any restrictions on it is that uh, they do not accept uh, roll-ins if the traditional IRA has post-tax money in it. And they don't do in-kind transfer. So you, if you own a thousand shares of XYZ company, you can't transfer the shares in themselves. You actually have to go to cash. You have to get a check. You have to send a check in. So you can't do actually a direct transfer of shares like you can when you go from a traditional to a Roth IRA. Uh, so here's the steps on how to do it. Uh, summary. So you're going to roll your traditional IRA into the PRAP. Make sure it's accepted before you do anything. Make sure it's accepted. The balance is showing up. Um, you're going to take your traditional IRA. It's going to stay open, just a zero balance in it. Uh, you're going to open a Roth IRA if you don't already have one. You can make non-deductible contributions to your traditional IRA. Those are the maximum amounts there. Uh, well, after you make those non-deductible contributions, you can transfer them into your Roth IRA. And again, there should be no need to go to cash unless the custodian has some restriction on that. But uh, most likely, if you're going to do this, you're probably going to go to cash. You're going to probably contribute it as cash, turn right around a week later and do this anyway. So probably just transferring cash anyway. And then when you do this, file form 8606 with your taxes. And that states the amount of non-deductible IRA contributions you've made. That's way, that way the IRAs can keep track of it as well. All right, so the uh, a question comes up, can I do a back to Roth IRA, our Roth IRA for the previous year? Uh, yes, you can. And all it also it is, it's just a matter of making your non-deductible contributions to a traditional IRA by the tax filing deadline uh, of the year you're making the contribution. So it's 2020 right now. You have until April 15th of 2020 to make your 2019 contributions. Uh, you can make your 2020 contributions at the same time. Uh, and then you could do all the whole conversion in the year of 2020. You're not limited on the amounts that you can convert, only the amounts that you contribute. So if you did that, you contributed, so you just say you made your 2019 contributions in the next couple months, and then you still had a traditional IRA out there that you wanted to transfer to. So just follow those steps, transfer that into the PRAP. Once that's in there, then you can do the, then you can do the uh, Roth conversions 
uh, for the non-deductible uh, IRAs uh, you've contributed to. Um, let me see. Do you have to wait some time before doing the backdoor uh, conversion? No, you do not. So it used to be that you uh, kind of had to disguise this a little bit, and that's what uh, most people were doing anyway. It wasn't clear on what the IRS thought of these backdoor Roth conversions. In the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, a couple years ago, they made it clear that there is the step transaction doctrine, as it's called, does not apply to the uh, Roth conversions or the backdoor Roth IRA. So there's no waiting period. No having to conceal what you're trying to do with the backdoor Roth IRAs. Uh, how much can you contribute? There's a limit, uh, $6,000 if you're under 50, $7,000 if you're going to be 50 or older by the end of the year. So those are 2020 numbers. And then the contribution deadline is the tax final deadline for the year of the contribution. So again, you have until April 15th of 2020 to make 2019 contributions. And you could make 2020 contributions at the same time if you so uh, wanted to. That's it. If you've got any questions, comments, uh, recommendations, or referrals, shoot me an email, dan at unitedwealthmanagement.com. I absolutely appreciate your feedback. I've got very uh, positive feedback on these videos, and uh, that means a lot to me because uh, it does take some time to do it, but uh, I like doing them too, so uh, I like it. But if you've got recommendations on things you want to hear, um, shoot me an email. Let me know what, uh, what uh, topics you want me to cover because the best content I can put out is what you guys want to hear about. And if this comes up while you're flying uh, and you're flying with someone who's this investment, tax planning stuff is just not their cup of tea, hey, keep me in mind. Let them know I'm open for business. I absolutely appreciate that. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and always remember, uh, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you know when new videos come out.